Hello, so this is my um, new pan and tilt design for my twin star, um, which <clears throat> if you remember, if, I don't know if you've seen the other ones, uh, my other pan and tilt designs, but um, the, the other one you might have seen was for my helicopter, um, which was designed to be quite sort of low profile to hang under the skids. Um, this one has been redesigned for, um, or is a new design for the, um, for the twin star. Um, so, um, I mean, one of the things is I want it to be like an offset pan axis, yeah? So um, I can look over the edge um, of the fuselage uh, to the side. Um, this, this plate here is uh, the one that usually is on my helicopter. Um, so I'm just using this for <coughs> sort of illustration purposes, really, until I... Uh, finish the fuselage for the twin star um, to decide how big this plate needs to be but it's only needs to be quite small um, in which case obviously I'll be able to pan all the way around without any um, interruption from the from the mounting plate um, so I mean to put it in perspective um, let me just uh, let me zoom out a bit here um, <coughs> so this is the twin star fuselage um, at the nose end and I'm kind of thinking it's going to be you know sort of about there somewhere towards the front um, which should give me a pretty good uh, pretty good view and if I simulate this here you can see I can sort of look over the side um, and uh, all the way around so that's the idea for that um, let me zoom in again. So basically, it's a rough overview. This is the um, um, Range Video DX201 camera uh, with a 3.6mm lens. Um, the only thing about this design, I suppose, if anything, is the accessibility to get to the, um, sorry, it's on the bottom, the um, programmer to be able to sort of change the configuration of the camera but um, I mean once you've got it set up it's pretty straightforward so I just sort of got these four hole uh, the four screws there and the whole camera just pulls out um, and I can do what I want with it um, so this is a, a three mil flange bearing here um, supported on the tilt and then on the uh, on the other side it's basically the um, again carbon fiber tilt plate uh, with the servo mounted in which is the uh, 65 um, HB servo, um, little wooden blocks to space it out. Um, pretty much all, all of the screws and nuts here are two mil, stainless steel. Um, we'll break it down um, into its finer components so you can have a look and see how it's built. Um, so we're using a, a geared pan here um, for no other purpose other than uh, I really don't like uh, hanging pans off the off the servo horn, uh, it's just not particularly safe. So, um, so yeah, that uh, keeps it. This is mounted with a four mil bolt with flange bearings, uh, so it's very, very smooth. Um, I'm just gonna zoom out a tad bit. Um, so that's the general design, so let's, uh, let's get it hooked up and you can see it rocking and rolling. Okay, so here she is set up on a couple of batteries. And, uh, you can see it got some pretty good movement there. I've done a modification on this, so it's an HS81 um, on the pan, um, and I've done a modification for, for 180 degrees on that, just with a couple of 2K resistors um, soldered onto the pot internally. Um, I don't particularly like the servo stretcher. Um, little things you get, <coughs> they don't tend to be particularly smooth, and this you can see. As smooth as my thumb can be on the controller, of course. I mean, this is like super, super solid. I mean, there is absolutely no slop, no movement. You know, there's no, there's no sideways wobble or anything. If I'm wobbling it, the bottom carbon fibre plate's wobbling as well, yeah. I mean, I can, I can, you know, lift these batteries up, look, two of them, two 5,000 milliamp hour batteries with this. And look, if I twist it, the batteries twist. I mean, 
you know, it's totally, totally solid. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what, even in a crash, I don't think the, uh, the pan and tilt's gonna actually have any, have any damage. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fast. You know, I mean, once I get rid of this, um, once I get rid of the bottom plate here and it's put onto the fuselage properly, um, I'll be able to extend the, um, um, extend it right, you know, even further down um, to be able to look right over the side of the fuselage. But so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty, pretty smooth. It's very strong, very hard wearing. Um, and uh, and it's not particularly heavy either, um, given the fact that it's all ball raced and um, you know very strong. Uh, nothing's going to snap. Nothing's going to fall off. Um, so um, we'll break it down into its uh, smaller parts and um, maybe get a few bits and pieces on the um, on the digital scales, and uh, we'll see how she end, how she ends up. So if we take a look at the individual components, um, I've not bothered to take this apart because um, it's all set up perfectly for the gear mesh, but basically this is, uh, these um, aluminium arms here um, are just aluminium angle basically. Um, I think 30 mil by 20 mil, um, but I've cut it all down and shaped it and um, drilled some weight saving holes um, and it's like really, really solid, there's hardly any movement at all. Well, there isn't any movement at all, even when you really give it some. Um, so you've got the carbon fibre main pan plate there. Um, and these are all countersunk two mil screws, um, which are all, these are stainless steel. Uh, four mil main pan bolts, so uh, in terms of the actual, um, you know, the entire weight of the pan and tilt is taken by a four mil bolt rather than um, you know, rather than a servo horn, which I, I really don't like doing. Um, I know some people do it, but I've seen quite a few people lose their lose their cameras basically from the the servo horn snapping. Um, so yeah, and this is uh, again aluminium angle. I think that's about twenty mil by ten mil originally. So that was just cut down and shaped. <coughs> um, and again, this is countersunk screw there, uh, which holds the servo horn on. Um, of course you've got the flange bearing in there, three mil flange bearing. Um, there's a very small little bit of uh, um, epoxy resin holding that in just for absolute security. Um, not totally needed because the pressure actually keeps it in anyway. Um, so that's the sort of main, uh, the main pan hub and then um, that obviously goes into the the mount plate. Now this is a bit bigger than normal. This is for my helicopter, but for the twin star, it doesn't. You know, it only needs to be sort of this big, really. Um, just mounted on some hardwood blocks um, that's uh, secured into the foam. So this is a servo city gear, usually for high tech servos. Uh, sorry, for Futaba servos, and I never use Futaba servos with gears anymore. So um, I've got quite a big stock of these, lots of different uh, tooth arrangements. So um, I sort of use these, and I drill into the cog. Um, and I actually use a, a servo horn for a, a micro micro servo um, and I, I drill out the centre spline to be about five and a half mil which fits perfectly, uh, six mil I think it is, which fits perfectly and um, the servo horn which gives me my point markers to mark the holes and drill through, yeah? Um, and again these are countersunk into the, uh, into the gear uh, and then there's a doubler carbon fibre doubler under there, look, which just keeps it raised above um, the mounting plate. So you've got four mil flange bearing at the top and four mil flanging at the bottom. Um, and of course the gear is sort of screwed onto the base plate as well um, to make it nice and rigid. So that's not going anywhere. And again, by having this distance here, it means that the actual movement is far, far less, if anything at all. So when the, when it's mounted in, You've got perfectly smooth pan. So, um, and again, we've got just a, like a little, a little shim, um, which is important to use. A lot of people don't bother with this, but you use a little shim 
um, which fits perfectly, and then the four mil, uh, the four mil nut, of course, uh, lock nut, um, which means you can do it up tight, but not too tight, and it's not going to come undone. Um, so enough to stop it moving, um, you know, like that, um, but not enough to restrict the smooth movement. Um, <clears throat> and again, with the uh, you know with the bearing on here, regardless of the weight, it's going to be really really nice and smooth all the time. Uh, and also, more importantly, very hard wearing. Yeah, so I'm not going to be worrying about you know gears running out and you know uh, bushings and things becoming worn out uh, using bearings. And they're not particularly heavy, so um, yeah, man. And then uh, these are the little um, uh, mounting brackets for the for the DX201. Um, which uh, are shaped obviously specifically to fit over that and they just screw into where the original screws would be which fortunately are, are two mil so um, you know you've got one on one on one side um, and then the other one's a little bit easier to do because you've not got that stupid bit sticking out the side of the lens bam um, and so uh, these are countersunk as well uh, this is the one that holds the bearing. Uh, so you've got countersunk holes there. Um, so when we have that on there, and the holes go all the way through to give it, make it, oh, make it a little bit lightweight. Um, and then we use a titanium uh, three mil flathead um, as the main tilt axis yeah which goes um, which goes through the bearing flange bearing um, and again we're using uh, proper bearing shims here these little chaps which are perfectly formed for the uh, the inner race of the bearing um, so we don't actually have anything touching the outerness of the flange bearing so it's all very very smooth and then these um, <coughs> these here are just um, little wooden blocks that I carved up um, uh, basically just to keep the, the tilt servo um, extend it out to where I need it to be um, so this is just hardwood spruce I think it is I got from the model shop which um, I've got a black marker out and made them black <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, and they go they go on the actual uh, this one is for the tilt servo. You see here I've got a little bit that's not marked black because I know that's the bottom one. Um, so they match in perfectly. And again, same configuration with the old you know, flange, um, countersunk. Um, and again we're using very, very incy wincy tiny screws. Look, these are two mil stainless steel uh, flathead. Um, and the, the Allen driver I use for these um, is a 1.3 mil, which is not very common. Yeah, look at the size of that; it's tiny. Um, but they are very, very good screws and um, extremely strong. Um, and of course, when they're all thread locked, le thread locked, and everything, it's uh, you know super reliable. And I'm never going to worry about losing a camera or losing um, losing a pan and tilt, which uh, in FPV could be potentially fatal to my plane and maybe someone else. Right, so in terms of the uh, the overall weight um, of the actual pan and tilt, I mean, the, I suppose the heaviest bit is the um, the pan disc, if you like. Um, it's got a four mil, four mil bolt there. Um, so that includes everything, including the horn. Uh, let's button that on there. And then, uh, Got one of the camera brackets, and that's the other camera bracket, and that's the ball race carbon fiber, that's the servo mount carbon fiber. This is quite chunky because this is uh, way bigger than it needs to be with the flange bearings. Uh, this whole plate is what I normally mount to the helicopter, not to me, uh, not to a twin star, but we'll put that on anyway. Better to overestimate than underestimate. And then we've got all your screws and nuts. Like so. 
So yeah, I suppose we're talking about 35 grams. Hmm. I mean, considering how strong it is, I don't think that's too bad. Um, and then obviously we've got the servos and the camera, so that, that's the main sort of mechanics. That includes obviously this, which is way oversized, but you get the idea. Um, I mean, the camera's, uh, I mean, the DX201's quite a heavy camera anyway. <clears throat> it's not the smallest on the market. Let's bang that on. Brings out a 70. Now we've got the pan servo with the, with the gear. And then, uh, and then we've got the tilt servo, which is 65 HP. Oh, 101 grams. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of um, including the entire thing um, and how strong it is, I think that's, uh, I think that's not bad going.